day. Let's go at it. I'm gonna throw a little bit of grease in the hit points of this thing. Maybe some of the universal lines, just a couple things, and then uh, blow the cab out, because yes, I keep getting that cab dirty. I try. It's hard. It's dirty out there. And then I might have to change the flag on this thing. Well, after 71.6 engine hours, I think it's time I put some fuel in this thing. That's pretty good. We're at what, under a quarter tank of fuel and uh, got over 70 hours on this machine. I'd say that's doing pretty good. Let's top her off. Pro tip for uh, new quad track owners out there. Turn the tractor to the left a little bit. Pulls the ladder over, easy to climb up and get next to your fuel tank. Just a thought. This might be the first time this has been open since the factory. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Nice big opening. She's down. Let's put some fuel in it. It's only gonna take about 400 gallons. That's not a lot of diesel, right? You know, it feels like a lot of diesel, really. This thing burning, what, 400 gallons the last uh, couple weeks, two weeks of being here. But the thing is, we haven't been running all of our trucks. In fact, for the past three, four days, they haven't been running at all. They've just been sitting there. And those are all 855 Cummins. So, well, I guess one's a 3406 B cat. But the bottom line is, those would be sucking the diesel fuel, and they're not. This is, because this has been doing all the work shuttling to the grain bagger, which is right around the corner. So I guess it's probably a good toss up right now, honestly, with fuel burn. We're probably a uh, tractor, trucks. We've eliminated a couple trucks by having the tractor. I'd be curious to see. But the benefits to having a cart with the scales, being able to keep track of yields, being able to keep track of grain coming off, rented ground, owned ground, whatever it was, is awesome being able to keep the combines moving strong without beating the trucks up in the field because the tractor takes the abuse, not the trucks. And that's a lot nicer ride than a truck. There's a lot of benefits to this, it really is. It's just getting the capital to get this set up is the, the biggest hurdle. And once you have that and you've got the setup, then it's smooth sailing. But we haven't quite gotten there yet. So thank you, Case IH and Ever First for providing <laughs> this setup for us. It's been been a real thrill. It's been awesome. And I'm really hoping that you guys are enjoying this because uh, this is definitely a fun operation to run this year. And uh, it's exciting to have you guys along for the ride. So good stuff. Uh, I better check make sure I'm not dumping diesel everywhere. I like those fuel gauges. Reason is, is the sun doesn't destroy that rubber hose. Our buds, the rubber line is just sticking out. Plastic and rubber gets degraded. That's definitely nicer. I think it's still a little rubber tube in there. I mean, it's a plastic tube, but it's shielded by that aluminum housing outside. And that's nice. Whoops. Just a little spillage. Try to get pressure wash clean that off a little bit so it doesn't get all dirty when I'm drowning. These tracks take a lot of grease. And uh, if you haven't seen earlier in the videos, this thing's got an automated greaser on it, but it is getting low down to like right here. So it's about time I throw some grease in it. And I found out from uh, the Umberforth guys how to do it. Pretty simple. There's, well, at least I guess I'll find out if it's pretty simple. But there's a tube in here, this. So you basically put your grease tube in it. Connect it to this uh, grease pump and then just uh, push the grease back into the reservoir. Let's give it a shot and see if it works. I'm gonna stop there. It's like a tube every two days, I think, is what it burns through. Well, those tracks are expensive. That track system is expensive. And if you don't want that track system to fail, keep the grease in that thing. The trailer park's still here. We've, uh, We've appointed Wiggles to be camp host. So he's gonna keep track of uh, activity going on at the campground here. Make sure the shenanigans are kept to a low. So I went to my settings on the Pro 1200 here and I actually adjusted my transmission to start off in second gear instead of fourth. Cause I've got a nasty knack of killing this tractor <laughs> with the clutch, I don't know, I'm just not used to it. This way it works a lot better. So for those that haven't driven a quad, there is a clutch. You start off with it, pull your uh, parking brake back, forward, let go and then let the clutch out nice and slow. The thing about that is with starting out in second, when I've got a cart back here full of about 1,800 bushels, yes, we've had it about that full and it was heavy. I don't have to worry about burning the clutch or trying to start off because in second gear, there's enough torque, it's slow enough gear that it'll just start rolling right on the ground without much effort of letting the clutch out. Another thing I noticed, I've got 16 gears, right? And it's running at what, 21, 50 RPM, that's max RPM. I got one more bump I can do with this, click. Now it says 16 high. If you watch the RPMs, it lets it run up to about 3,300 RPM. And that gets me that extra three miles an hour. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So they, they don't let you redline the engine up to 2300 RPM unless it's roading in the top gear. Then it gets up to 2300. 
but if you're drilling the field, you, I don't think you can hit that RPM. So it's kind of interesting. It gives you an option to just run the RPMs up a little bit more just for that rodent speed, which makes sense. The engine should over rev unless you're going down a hill and you got that in high range, you got a load on you, which check this out, engine brake, tap that on. When I go to slow down at the corner up here, I'll let off my multifunction handle. Let's pull back the throttle. Oh, you guys can't hear it, but the engine is braking itself. So there's an exhaust brake somewhere in the engine line. Oh, maybe that's what that thing was. Maybe it's not a boost cooler, it's a brake. I don't know. Anyways, somewhere there is an engine brake. So it'll use the engine to slow the tractor down. So when you got a thousand bushel grain car back there, or a grain tank with a big old air seeder, and you're going down a hill, you don't want to just ride the brakes the whole time, you can let the engine help a little bit, which has been in the trucking industry for ages, but it's nice to see it in a big tractor like this. I think there's a snowstorm, isn't there? Glad I have a cab. It's not cool out there. It's about 78. No snowstorm yet. But uh, to give guys a little bit of history, uh, we actually had a month of August where there was not just one snowstorm, but two. Back in 1992, uh, our crop was getting close to being ready to harvest and about the third week of August, about the beginning of the third week of August, this really cold front came through and snowed about six to seven inches of snow from the north going south and laid the crop, and most of our fields go north and south, laid it over at about all oh, a 45 degree uh, angle. Well, that was okay. But one week later, before it could uh, dry out, another one came through, and another about six, seven inches of snow, really wet snow, landed on that 45 degree crop and laid it down to where it was just above the crop. And it was a decent crop, but all that material was laying to the south. And it was one horrendous, harvest, trying to harvest uh, that uh, uh, crop that was leaning. Um, I mean, the guys tried all kinds of ways to try to pick that crop up, you know, cutting from the south to north and deadheading all the way south again and then cut back. Some went, we went crosswise, uh, was able to get uh, a lot of it, but there's a lot of it was left on the ground. But anyway, I uh, just brought this up because uh, it isn't snowing. We're stacking it on now, boys and girls. I'm getting as close as I can to the combine so you can get as far a reach over to throw it on the backside, but definitely gonna break 100,000 pounds this time around. My biggest load so far hauled is about 1,800 bushels, so uh, let's see if we get this one bigger. That was 107,000 pounds. I think he's gonna be pushing that. Oh man, I'm only like a foot and a half from his header. I don't like getting that close. But auto steer is working like a charm right now. It looks like he got it all on. Okay, all right, let's roll. Dad's combine blew a fuse, lost his auto steer, lost his moisture sender, lost his rear axle position sensor. So he's gonna go ahead and get a fuse. Let's just hope the fuse was weak and that it was just his time to blow. Because a lot of times when fuses blow, it means something's shorting out somewhere or overvolting the system. So when he puts the new fuse in, if it pops, we're in trouble. And we gotta start diagnosing that combine. If he puts the fuse in and it doesn't pop, yeah, let's hope for that. So Clifford is down for now. All right, let's take this back. Turn my hazards on, blinkers, hit the road, and do a mighty 15 miles an hour all the way back. In previous videos in the spring, you know, Kobe loves to ride on the outside fender of the uh, big butt so that in case something jumps up he can jump right off and take off after and run but he's right close to the engine and many have commented well, and i should say many but number have commented saying that well isn't he gonna lose his sense of hearing well he's been doing this for at least four years and you would think that his hearing would be uh somewhat diminished um well, I don't think that's accurate. So I'm gonna show him right now. He's just hearing me talk, but he's just sitting there and it, it's not, you know, all this excess noise. 
I'm gonna grab my lunchbox top. Nothing like a dinner bell. Okay, he's just looking out there, but I'm gonna go and just pick up part of my lunch and then you'll see his reaction. He can hear plastic barely, barely move. Um, it's amazing and it, I hadn't opened it up, there's no smell, but he can hear that. He's trained himself that he gets to share my lunch. So um, either I need to be out for lunch or I gotta share it. He loves carrots. definitely pulverize the ground a lot more than tires do. I've noticed that. They may have less compaction, like I might be putting less pounds per square inch down because of the footprint of these things, but I'm just looking at the tire tracks for my roading before in the field. That's one pass with a fully loaded grain cart. I mean, it turned into powder underneath there. So that hammering force and all those tracks laying down, it, it breaks the surface up, makes it really uh, yeah, light and soft. So definitely tires roll over stuff, Tracks, uh, they kind of grind it up, I've noticed. Look at all those grain bags. Man, woo, that's a lot of grain. About 13,000 bushels each. That is a funny thought, seeing this grain on the ground like that. That's pretty cool. Hats off to the grain bag producers. These things are awesome. And that loftiness bagger works pretty good. Just gotta learn little tricks, do's and don'ts, how to use that thing properly. Use it properly, follow what they say, it'll work, and it works well. All right, bump this down to first gear. PTO, click on. Throttle up to 1800 RPM, roughly. I like to do about 1750. Trigger, open the gate up. About four to five is what I found works best. This changes depending on the humidity in the air and the wetness of the crop, but it seems like it flows pretty good about this speed. Leg arms is comfortable in his 4520. I'm uh, comfortable in my 620 quad. Looks like Wiggles is out there running around. Comfortable in his do rag and uh, 100 degree weather. It looks like we put 1600 bushels in there and they just told me to cut it off, now that's full. So that's good, I've got another, I don't know, 200 bushels left in the cart, so I'm gonna go dump that one of the trucks over here and then we're gonna start using trucks because at this point, I think we're done with bags till we know how our final yields are gonna be. So we're gonna start putting the rest of this in bins now, including the big bin, the large, uh, what is it, 28,000 bushel West Steel bin that we had just had erected, that's gonna take the grain now, so uh, let's start filling that thing up. And let's put the rest right in the International right there, tip it down, barely made enough room, fire her up again. Ah oh, yeah, there she goes. I better hold it there, because I don't have any room to throw that any further. I got the spout tilted about as far as it can go. I can go left and right, there we go, like that. <laughs> right there, that's a good spot, see right there. And we're good. Let's roll. Yes, sir. Got it? I got it. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. We'll uh, send someone to come grab that. Sounds good. Appreciate See it. Later. Thanks. Bye. Yep. Bye. I get used to that. <laughs> nice. Phone calls through the tractor cab. Good speakers can actually understand what they're saying. That was the parts at Torgerson's. They've got a steering sensor there. So we're pretty sure my dad, when we put the new fuse in, turned the corner down here and all the alarms kicked off. Checked the fuse. Blue. Well, that only means one thing. When he's dead at the steering out, something in that steer sensor in his rear steering, which that goes, that tells the system what angle the, the wheels are for the auto steer. Very important, because he doesn't have auto steer right now. He's freehanding it, which is probably bringing back a lot of bad memories right now. <laughs> no, he's a pro, he's done a lot of years. It's just uh, dumping on the go is a little more sketchy. It's nice when both machines are on auto steer. Anyways, they have one on the shelf. So um, I'm gonna send someone to go get it. And uh, we'll put that in and hopefully it'll stop blowing fuses. Because right now we unplug the sensor, put the fuse in, so that way at least his other functions are working and that are on that same system. And then uh, we'll get that changed out. So, good deal. Uh, a little squiggly there. Auto steer is pretty nice. I've already had to stomp down some of his skips with the quad track. That's where tracks come in really handy is knocking down skips. He's doing a good job though. It's just, yeah, auto steer sure is quite the luxury. And just like that, we're back to filling trucks. 
or I should say truck, because it's amazing. We do almost everything with just this International right now. I didn't see this day coming, but with a 2,000 bushel grain cart, one truck's enough to keep up with 30 bushel to 40 bushel wheat. Kind of crazy. And done. Nice quick little 1,100 bushels right there. Bradley is uh, hitting the road. Wiggles, sorry, Wiggles. Back to combines. Still haven't figured out what's going on with my dad's combine. Every now and then it'll just blow a fuse. We've checked around, something is causing a spike in electricity and popping a fuse, so. But we keep putting new fuses and it keeps working and uh, that's the only nodding donkey on the entire farm. Pump jack. I think they use that to pump water out of these old gas wells. I've never seen that thing move my entire life. It's just been there. Anyways, but yeah, so uh, we're just gonna keep put, pop, popping more fuses in the combine and get by as long as we can because we just don't have time to diagnose a wiring issue right now. And when the day comes, we'll get a chance. But right now, a couple fuses here and there, not really expensive, just keep doing it. Keep dad happy, keep the auto steer going. Yeah, things got awkward. You're drifting. Last thing I wanted was to have him in here eating his lunch next to me, feeding me pretzels. By the way, we're in some of the best wheat we've been in all year. This piece almost got hailed, but it didn't get the hail. They got the rain that was right next to the hail. So it got the moisture without the white combine, which made it yield, at least the guys are saying 60 plus bushels an acre, which it would be absolutely phenomenal. I, I bet you it's probably gonna be high 40s to 50 when we're said done, but we're pretty excited to be harvesting this right now means my job as a car driver is going to be a lot wait, more wait. busy. I'll make it back. I'll make it back. I guess I don't need to drive out there. Though. That was rude. He yeah. interrupted you. He did. We're going to drive the neighbor's field. So anyways, yes, we're know. happy. Um, we'll uh, we'll see how it yields, but this is pretty awesome. It won't necessarily bring up the whole yield so far because we've cut a lot of acres at 30 to 35 bushel. So we would have to have a lot of acres of this to bring the, the, <laughs> the yield averages up. But this is definitely very nice. So let's uh, let's just uh, let's just love it while it's here. All right, combine time for me been long enough it's time to move on <laughs> the little older machine the seats aren't leather but on the bright side I get beast bind I haven't driven beast bind this year yet oh we're halfway through harvest I'm a terrible person let's fix this there he is he's waiting for me I've actually been waiting to get to the good wheat whole point was to have them cut the 30 bushel crop and then I jump in and cut the 60 bushel. I'm terrible like that, aren't I? What? <laughs> Get out of it! Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. There's beast spine seats. It's been a while, buddy. Ooh, ha. Oh, actually, this seat's pretty nice. The windows are pretty dirty. Okay, let's get this figured out. See if I remember how to run a combine. Yep, Pro 700. Definitely not as pretty as a 1200. But it'll do. Yeah, there isn't a lot of room, wow. I see what they mean by when the sun's shining this way, it's hard to see what you're doing. Oh, that card is huge. Oh, it looks so much bigger from this angle. Oh, look at the gauge. Oh, I love that, that LED, not gauge, the scoreboard. 71,000 pounds on that bad boy. This is a good sight. Okay, yeah, I'll get used to this. I like it. Combine operating, it's it's a riot. Oh man, I'm, I'm serious, That that is awesome watching that thing pull up alongside. That uh, beats a truck. By the way, Quad track interior, amazing. But I do love this little cubby right here. This is like the best phone spot ever for your phone. I love it. Thank you for putting that there back in the day, case IH. But once I get a RAM mount on that 1200 console display area that was on the side of that quad track there, then it'll be beautiful for your phone because I have those little quick connect phone adapters or the ones that clamp your phone when you put it in there. That'll be money. I just haven't set it up yet. So many of you are probably going, what am I doing right now? I am in a combine, sometimes called harvesters, threshing machines, or, well, I should say red combine. This is a 2013 8230 Case IH Axial Flow Combine, and it's got a 45 foot rigid header on it with a cross auger that we don't have engaged. I disconnected the cross auger here because we don't need it in wheat. It's just spinning and wearing on the bearings, so just unplug it. Less hydraulic flow, less heat generated, less energy lost, and uh, less things for your eyes to daze and slowly put you to sleep by looking at all this happening down here. We are combining spring wheat. This is spring wheat that's gonna get turned into high quality milling flour for making like bread, donuts, waffles, you name it. 
this is what it gets made into. So we're hoping this is high protein, good quality, good color, has never been rained on since it's been ripe. So it should be good. Back here's my grain tank. So far, so good, looking good. I'm at the end of the field. This is called our headland. The headland is the end of the field and wow, his lift is really slow. I'm gonna have to fix that. So you turn out, spin a 180 right here like this. And then I'll double tap my auto steer, drop my header back down. And then we're back in. So for those of you out there that are not farmers and do not know what a combine does, a combine is basically a separating machine. All it's doing is taking the seed, which is right there in those grain heads, that's the wheat, the little heads on top of the wheat stem, got lots of little grain kernels in it, that's seeds. And all it's doing is taking the seeds and it's ripping them out of the heads, putting the seeds in the grain tank and kicking everything else out the back of the combine, theoretically. It's not 100% perfect. There is some grain that gets kicked out of the back of the combine. That's called grain loss. I have little indicators here that tell me my grain loss so I can try to adjust the combine to reduce that because we don't want to lose grain out the back because that's like throwing money to the wind. And then two, I'm constantly trying to maintain a decent quality back here because no matter what we do, there's no way we can get a perfect sample. There's going to be what's called chaff. Chaff is little broken pieces of the plant, like straw or parts of the head, whatever, maybe leaves. It's ripped up and becomes chaff. Chaff is light and some of it makes it into the grain tank. And you don't want chaff because you get docked at the, when you go to sell your grain if you have too much of it. So it's kind of this constant battle of trying to get that clean, but not have bad grain loss. Now, if you get that really clean back here, typically that means that your grain loss goes up. If you get your grain loss to go way down, it means a lot of junk's going in here. So it's kind of like a graph, two points like this, you know, converge. You're trying to find the center of the X, center of the graph. One goes up, the other goes down. Other way, one goes up, there goes down. The best spot's right in the, that sun's just ruining my shot. It was an attempt. You guys know what I'm getting at. So anyways, that's the combine operator's job. Now, they have what's called automated combines. The new 250 series combines have automation. And the automation basically is a computer taking over for the operator with lots of sensors, doing all those adjustments on the fly, way faster than a human could ever do. And it'll make your sample cleaner your loss go down and your efficiency go up. And this is not one of those combines, unfortunately. But someday we will have those. We will. Okay, here we go. Ch -ch -ch Chia Chad. First time driving the grain car by himself. He's in the 620 FS Connect quad and uh, let's see if he does a good job. Because if he doesn't, I might have to put leg arms back in there. But no, Chad's going to be a good operator. I think it'd be great. So I'm going to dump in him. And uh, yes, it's great being in the combine, but Man, I'm missing that cab. Whoa, that thing's already got 89,000 pounds in it. Let's stack it on there. Oh yeah, get it on. Uh, let's start with the back first, make his alarm go off. I wanna see that thing beep at me. I can't even tell. I don't even know where our, this grain is going. Let's hope I don't spill it over the edge. Okay, let's go forward a little bit. I think I got that pretty stacked, 94,000 pounds. Let's go forward some more. Oh yeah, oh, it's going on there. There's a lot of weight going on that thing right now. <laughs> I'm mounting it on there. Oh, it's going over the edge. Gotta hurry up, there we go. <laughs> 98, 99, gonna break 100K. Oh man, I put a lot on there. I need to go about another two feet over and then I get the backside of that cart, but I can't reach it. Okay, we're good to go. 100,900 pounds. Oh yeah, there's lots of room. Good job, Chad. Ch -ch -ch Chia Chad.
last pass on this strip and oh, 45 feet and I just got a little skip on each side. Oh, it's not worth leaving it, going back and getting it. I'm just leaving it. There goes $5. Oh, I want to go to bed. It's been a long, long time since I've seen consistent 50 to 60 bushel wheat in one field. You always hit a low spot or, you know, just a small area that'll that'll yield that well, but it's never, it's never the consistency of the whole field. Yeah, well, this time it is. That is awesome. Oh, it feels good. But we're gonna shut down for the night. So, I'll see you on the flip side when, you know, the you know the sun's like on the other side of the earth, it's gonna flip around. Or maybe it's already flipped over for you. Well, for me it hasn't, so it's gonna, so I'm going to bed. Good night, I'll be back.